Lord. First of all, I am uh, not an archaeologist. We can't hear you. You just have to try to speak a little bit louder because the mic holds it closer to your mouth. Okay. Hold it real close. Yep. How about this? Yeah. I am not a uh, archaeologist. I'm a professional aerial photograph interpreter. I've been doing this for probably well over 50 years. And <clears throat> my clients currently are attorneys. I see a lot of reality TV at trials. And uh, I use a geographic information system for producing court graphics. Uh, first slide is a map that I produced in early 2015. It's called a sensitivity map. The brown area is alluvial soils. Yellow area, light yellow, is uh, glacial till and bedline, <clears throat> and the orange area is primarily sand. The real areas of interest are those, are those in red, and those are the deltas formed within Lake Hitchcock, and they're called early post-glacial deposits. And they're <clears throat> of high interest because they correlate very highly with Native American sites. So you look at the distribution of the red areas on the map, and that's just what, when I first showed this to Bud Driver, he said, wow, that looks just like the map I drew of the Native American sites in the Deerfield River Valley. <clears throat> um, so the more I thought about it, I said, uh, how extensive are these, are these sites? I didn't know anything about Glacial Lake Hitchcock at the time. So the next slide shows the distribution of these early post-glacial deposits. All the, way from, all the way from Northfield down to Agawam. So if they have this high correlation of value in the Deerfield area, do they also have those same characteristics of the area all the way down to the Connecticut line? And taking this further, if they have this high value, uh, what do they look like and what and how are they mapped in uh, Connecticut? And also, how are they mapped or differentiated in New Hampshire and Vermont? So it gets you into this whole issue of uh, <clears throat> how extensive are these, are these uh, deposits? which being surrogates of Native American sites leads you to other questions. And that is, uh, you know, the, the extensive nature of these. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> if we look at these deposits is applying to Lake of Gateway Hitchcock. What about characteristics in other parts of New England? So we started thinking about the whole concept of modeling and, and the elements that come together to form these potential sites. And the first one is slope. The general configuration for the Native American sites the slopes is zero to three percent. There's three or four, three foot gradient in a hundred foot length. So these are gradual site, gradual gradations. They also preferred 
to be the sun with a southern aspect. Abundant fish, adjacent to abundant fish. Also, the presence of floodplains, uh, productive soils, uh, <clears throat> the wetlands, and up on, <clears throat> up on forests as well. So, slopes, slope information is available for anywhere in the country through uh, data in soils. <clears throat> the soils attribute uh, has a variety of ranges, and the lowest grade gradient is zero to three percent. So, by mapping in, in the in the uh, in Glacier Lake Hitchcock, the sites are fairly well defined by the uh, early post glacial deposit. But let's go on to another site. Can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> uh, by downloading the soils of Franklin County and mapping only those slopes of 0 to 3 percent, you have a distribution of red areas. Those are, those are soil types with a 0 to 3 percent gradient. And you notice oh, the majority of those are within the Connecticut River Valley. There's another, there's another area <clears throat> um, in the orange New Salem area, uh, towns as well. Next slide. This is an application showing the low gradient slopes in uh, Franklin County relative to the shoreline of Glacial Lake Hitchcock. And this was done. The, the, hitch, the, the lake <clears throat> was developed by scanning a digital elevation model at an elevation of 295 feet or 90 meters. This uh, produced a, a shoreline as well as all the islands uh, at that level. Here we are right here. <clears throat> if you look at these if you think about these uh, areas, they would uh, be the most uh, normal areas to anticipate uh, easy access into a lake, lake, lake glacial, glacial lake Hitchcock. This last one is Mount Toby. And if you look at these, you know, these areas here, um, you can see there will be a potential access into the lake. Next question, next item. <clears throat> and this would hold true even if you're looking at a town like Ashfield, right? You know, and the light blue areas that are uh, at two, zero to three uh, percent gradients. That little area right there is uh, given a high rating as a potential seasonal site because of the low gradient and its presence adjacent to the Bear River. quality <clears throat> uh, cold water stream. It's also the uh, site where the first settler built a log cabin. So what would appear to be uh, a potential Native American seasonal site 
was also attractive to the first settler. Next slide. I don't know if you can see some of the data quite well enough, but to the to the, to the left is the uh, flat area within the North Corbin area. And to the left, you see the uh, Dunnegate River Valley, the uh, early post-glacial deposits, and the, and the uh, lake outline. Next slide. Could I have the next slide, please? And looking at Native American sites, we mentioned that there was several components or landscapes or what we call site characteristics. <clears throat> As a professional aerial photograph interpreter, um, use the approach where you detect an item of interest and as you bring more image clues together, such as tones, shadows, size, shape, patterns, associations, etc., you move from the detection phase into the identification. And that allows you to produce uh, intelligence. If you pull these different elements, site characteristics together, you can do the same thing. Here's a site in Sudbury. Here's the Sudbury River. The wetland over here is the uh, floodplain of the Sudbury. The wetland over here, floodplain, floodplain area, high ground, and the number of burials in this location. So life was good here with the low gradient, the um, water, the wetlands, the floodplains, the high ground, the fresh water, and all the elements that made life good for them. Next slide. <clears throat> this is a site called Luck Park. It's, it was within the city limits of Northampton. This is an outlet that the blue area represents the glacial lake Hitchcock. The park is in here. The fluted point sphere point was found there. The site has a low gradient southern exposure, fresh water, the Mill River for natural researches, floodplains, uplands. So would this be classified as an occupation site? Next slide. This was the flat land in North Corbin in New Salem in orange. The white areas are the flat land areas. The orange airport <coughs> is within it. The Miller's River with the alluvial floodplain intersects the flatlands. So, 
began using the concept of the elements producing occupational sites or seasonal sites. Um, the area along the Millers River would be a seasonal site or an occupational site. It's my estimate it would be more of a seasonal site. Further to the west is Lake Matawa. And that is a uh, flowage that goes to the Chicopee River basin. The, to the right is a Lake Rohunta, which flows into the Millers. So the general, you know, so you look at these uh, elements or site characteristics, and you can, as these have more of the characteristics, you move like a photo interpreter from the detection onto the level of probability that it is either a seasonal site or an occupational site. And I don't know how much time I've used, but that's basically the points I wanted to make. That, and that these, it's, it's an early representation of a model for Native American sites. And it would apply to coastal regions, uh, to lakes, ponds, as well as river, riverine environments. <clears throat> the basic building block beyond the Lake Hitchcock and all other parts of the Northeast is the slope issue. And you can derive that from the attribute of soils. And that would be the beginning block for these adding on to these other site characteristics and building a model to a probability level. I don't know how much time I've used, but that's basically what I wanted to talk about today.